Hello, my name's Sandy Halliday and I'd like to introduce you to a project that I've been working on for some time. It is the second edition of Sustainable Construction. The first edition was produced in 2008. The second follows a very similar format, albeit 14 chapters have been consolidated into 12 and I've added approximately 18 new case studies, making it overall substantially bigger than the first edition. Each chapter has 10 international case studies alongside technical information based on a substantial literature survey. The case studies in Chapter 1 are all international precedents of best practice in sustainable design from the individual house to the city of small distances. Chapter 2 has examples of the policies and legislation that are driving, supporting and requiring improved practice across the world. Chapter 3 on cost challenges the idea that what we are currently doing is cost optimised, using a range of examples including the benefits of passive design over mechanical servicing and some affordable housing. It is a testament to the developing holism of sustainable design practice that these two examples, one of hemp building and one of straw, are justifiably located in the cost chapter and not buried in low impact construction. Appraisal tools and techniques bear a heavy responsibility for guiding, rewarding and encouraging best practice. Chapter 4 looks at a selection of the better ones that add value and not cost. A chapter on materials issues with some lovely projects is followed by one that looks at those materials that are pushing the boundaries of ecological design and how we use them, including some remarkable innovation. Environmental design looks at predominantly passive approaches to heating, cooling and ventilation in a range of climates. And chapter 8 then looks at the residual energy required to meet the demands of buildings once passive design has been optimised. There's lots on lighting and daylighting and water and sewage management includes cloudburst management alongside sparkly loose seats. The penultimate chapter looks at construction processes and provides assistance on setting strategies at the outset to ensure projects go well through to post-occupancy evaluation to drive continual improvement. I end on urban ecology, arguably my latest obsession. Humans are now an urban species and there will be no sustainable world unless we create sustainable cities that encompass all of the above best practice on materials, environmental design and resource management. Sustainable urbanism, based on a sustainable periphery, should be at the heart and soul of environmental, economic and social policy. And there are some examples of progress. I learnt a huge amount in the process of the researching for this book. I increased my vocabulary and awareness of interconnections I truly believe that every one of you will gain some useful insight, new knowledge or new facts. The book also has some wonderful endorsements from some often highly critical critics. Thank you very much. <laughs>